Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. your eyes as you're able. Gracious and merciful God, creator of us all, we thank you for your presence and your promises today. And as you pour out your spirit in this place and in our hearts and minds, connect us all, whether we're here on site or wherever we may be today, as early as it may seem because of the time change, that you are our God no matter through the seasons of life. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship with New Life Metropolitan Community Church on this fourth Sunday of Lent. It's hard to believe we're already moving that close to Easter. In a couple of weeks, it'll be Palm Sunday, and then it'll be really early for Easter sunrise service. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Would you join us for our gathering call today? Christina's going to lead us in English, and Chris will lead us in Spanish, and we will all respond accordingly. As we become aware of our unfailing love, O oh Lord, we, we want, want to, to live, live in accordance to your faith. faith. Queremos vivir cerca de tu verdad. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Solo tú eres Dios. Teach us your ways, O Lord. That we may walk in your truth. Para que caminemos en tu verdad. Give us undivided hearts to receive your name. Danos corazones íntegros para reverenciar tu nombre. We give thanks to you, O Lord. Te damos gracias, Señor Dios nuestro, de todo corazón, y glorifica tu nombre para siempre. For great is your, un, is your steadfast and unfailing love towards us. You deliver our souls from the depths of Sheol. Libras nuestras almas de tu, las profundidades del Seol. May God bless this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scriptures as we sing together, Be Thou My Vision.
I was thinking this morning, or actually last night, that if I could convince folks to change the time change to literally not at 2 a.m., but at 10.45 a.m., I could sleep late this morning, but that didn't work. No matter who you are or how you self-identify or at what time of the day you get up or go to bed or self-express, know that you are a child of God. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Who wants some coffee? Oh, before you sit down, find somebody that you either don't know, haven't talked to, but you maybe you've thought about this week, but never texted, email, or called them, and just say good morning. If you're joining us online, we're delighted to have you. No matter who you are or where you are in the world today, we're delighted to have you as part of our worship service today. You all may be seated. I can tell you're not a moving crowd this morning, so we'll see how the service moves us as we go forward. Well, I'm just glad you're all here today. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Mark. You're very cheerful today. I am. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm a morning person, so this is great for me. I got to go to bed early, and I just blamed it on the time change last night. So, um, welcome to everyone. Our lunch today is going to be at the main NEX food court, and they have a variety of things. I'm kind of excited about that. Yes, sir. Is this the Navy or the Marine? NEX. Navy. Navy is NEX. Okay. Right? You don't have to be military to go there. It's actually off base, so you don't have to show identification or be searched by the hot Marines at the gate. Okay, I'll leave that there. <laughs> so the food court is accessible without a military ID. Um, coming up, it is not on here. I got to talk to that person who provides these things. Um, we do have a board of directors meeting coming up on Tuesday at 7 p.m. That will be on Google Meet. If you're interested, let us know. We can send you the link. That is our regularly scheduled monthly board meeting. Then coming up on Wednesday, Thursday, we have our Discovery and Conversation Linton study for the book Learning to Walk in the Dark because sometimes God shows up at night. And again... All right, and we have been discovering that people have different feelings about the daytime versus the nighttime, and really it takes all of us, right? It takes a whole village to get through life together. Um, it's a very interesting book study. I highly encourage you to attend. It is on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. You can do Zoom. Mark usually sends out the Zoom link later in the week or sometime before Wednesday. He will send out that Zoom link. Or you can come here and do it in person, too. Again, the book is not needed, but if you're interested in the book, you don't want to get the book, you can go to Libby with the library card and get an audio version, which is fairly interesting. Or you can just come and join the discussion. We've had some folks yes, actually come and join the discussion. the first one or two, but you're in now, so mm -hmm. that's good. Not the third And I didn't read the book either. <laughs> I did listen to it, okay. though. I did listen to it. Don't ask me what it says, because I couldn't repeat it. Um, <laughs> coming up next Saturday. Saturday, it is here. It's one of our biggest events of the year. St. Patty's Day Parade. You might want to go to a wide shot on this one. <laughs> So beads, candy, we still are needing beads. We're still needing candy. Thank you for those of you who are continuing. Remember, it's not just individually wrapped, but individually sealed. So we want folks to feel safe when we give them this candy. 
Uh, Pee Wee's had a crowd making buttons, so we've got close to 2,000 buttons right out that say uh, Rainbow Shamrock, Love by God, uh, the beads, they're there. Alan is here this morning, is going to be our mermaid on the boat again, so awesome. We have probably three vehicles in their parade. If you talk to me after service today, if you can either be to be a street walker, we love that term, don't we? And uh, to give out buttons, or if you need to ride or whatever, talk to me if you can be there and be part of the parade because it is a wonderful event. The other thing is, right after worship today, uh, Ken and Rich and Jeff, uh, with Jeff's help, we're going to record the songs that our singing saints will be doing as we go through the parade route to just sort of bolster our thing, just because we never know on the day of the event how many people show up. And, you know, even the professionals, you do that when they're outside singing sometimes. So we may not be, well, I'm not going to say we're not professional, but we'll be on the singing saints on the back of the truck. So if you can stay, even if you're not going to be able to be part of the parade and you want to be part of that recording and can sing, and it's fun songs that we'll do going down the street, uh, stay after worship for just a little bit. It won't be long. And we'll still have time to go to the Hot Marine NX whenever for lunch. We're still going to have time to go to lunch. All right. It's coming up on March 23rd. We have our Meals to Go prep day. The information is in the bulletin. Now that time has changed again, that spring forward gets us. We um, will, Mark, can get that Sunrise on the Beach time uh, scheduled. Yeah, now that we know that sort of when the sun comes up and what that's going to be like in the next week or so, uh, if any of you are getting up that early anyway, please call me. That means I don't have to get up and go check it. But uh, we try to get there a little bit before, maybe 30 minutes before the sun actually comes up uh, to be. And that's down on the beach. If you don't know, if you've never gone, you go down. It's not where we normally do Wednesday evenings on the beach. It's further down a little bit right across from the Harris Teeter and the Kentucky Fried Chicken is there. There are restrooms in that parking lot, and if you go past those down to the uh, ramp and the stairs that go down on the beach, we're down on the beach. And we have been granted our permit by the city, again, to do that. So okay. that's awesome. Excellent. So no risk of me being arrested. But last time I had you arrested, you seemed to enjoy that. <laughs> Where is Officer Benny when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> After Easter is Drag Queen King Bingo 31. Can you believe that coming up? Tickets will go on sale in about uh, a week or two coming up. So watch for that. What April the 20th. Again, someone needs to put that on here, right? <laughs> Missing the information. Um, we uh, Are we still selling raffle tickets, Joy? Joy is here. You see her. Um, not during the sermon that's frowned upon, but anytime afterwards, she has some squares to sell for the NCAA 50-50 raffle. We have one for the men's and one for the women's. And that's not men vote, uh, buying a square and women buying a square. You could buy whatever uh, platform you want to be on. It's the men's team and the women's team, just to clarify. Then we have grief support coming up um, April 2nd. And Charles is not here today, Charles Hauser, but he is putting together our yearly Lake Sharando camping trip. Mark your calendars. That is going to be the weekend of May 10th. Now, I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday, and I will see you next Sunday. Thank you. Looking very different, by the way. Do you want to say a quick word, and I know you do, mm -hmm. uh, about the fundraiser that you're involved in, but it's for a very good cause and what's happening next weekend, why you won't be at the parade. Yes, I will not be at the parade, y'all. I'm so sorry. I am involved right now in a, it's a fundraiser to raise money for childhood cancer research. And the charity is called St. Baldrick's. They, uh, it's a play on St. Patrick's, so they always do it around St. Patrick's time. And as a participant, and raising money, I will be having my hair shaved. I'll be going nice little boot cut, boot camp haircut here. So please support me in this. You can support me by spreading the word. You can support me by just being kind to me when you see me on Sunday, okay? <laughs> Knowing that I got that new do. But that's what my hair's been growing for. And if you want information or if you would like to support me in a monetarily way, 
you could see me after service, I would greatly appreciate it. And I think it is a worthwhile cause. And if I'm all teary up with my bald head on Sunday, just, just give me a hug. Okay. G.I. Jen. G.I. Jen. G.I. Jen. G.I. Jen. G.I. Like Jen. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Lots of good things going on in our lives in a world that is crazy and mixed up. And this past week, uh, the world overall celebrated through the United Nations International Women's Day. And I think it's important for us to pause for just a moment as we continue in our journeys toward Easter to think about and realize that in many ways, yes, we have disparities and injustices right here at home with regard to, to pay and to women's voices and in empowering women across the, our, our country. But when we compare also to the, the plight of women internationally, oh my goodness, the uh, UN General Secretary reminded us this week that, uh, and this really struck, stuck out at me, that uh, women's unpaid care work, that means they're providing care as medical providers, uh, gets excluded from calculations of gross domestic product, and that the pandemic reminded us that uh, the women in so many instances were providing that care as volunteers. And it goes back, and in fact, made many of us perhaps who've been around uh, the MCC and in this country to a time when our communities, we were losing so many people, and it was the women in our churches and our community who took care of the men who were dying with complications with HIV and AIDS. Right here in our own community, we saw that in many times. And so we want to just lift up an, an awareness. Um, the other uh, part of the statistic that he mentioned is that the COVID pandemic, geopolitical conflicts, climate disasters, and economic turmoil have pushed more than an extra 75 million people into severe poverty since 2020. This could lead, now get this, this could lead to more than 342 million women and girls living below the poverty line by 2030. My goodness. The theme this year is invest in women. And so as we hold close women across the world and here at home Let's honor those women who continue to make a difference, our women who continue to make a difference, and girls, no matter how you self-identify, to know that God is a God and calls on us to speak up, to be a viable, visible voice for injustice and for equity. Let's take just a moment and say, Oh God, our God, may your spirit of reconciliation and peace and justice and equity somehow be in, in the hearts and minds and actions of leaders, of uh, men in power who are just oppressing women in so many ways in our cultures, both at home and abroad. And just we claim that in this moment, that your power of love will be so radically inclusive that women will be truly honored in a way that should have happened years ago, but that can happen now. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. In our Lenten journey, I call your attention again to the video screen as we listen to our theme song, Return to Me. Turn 
Have you ever just been so overwhelmed with emotions that you are truly, truly humbled by God's love or someone else showing you kindness and love? And it makes you, with humility, just sort of pause for a moment. But then as that joy comes and takes hold from down inside and you realize how much you're loved, you can't contain it. And it begins to bubble up. It begins to well out. And all of a sudden, you know that if you don't somehow find a way to either share it or to say it or to be it, that you just can't hold it anymore. Have you ever been there and done that? Maybe it's been a while since all of us have been there because we're so up and down in any given week. And it's been one of those kind of weeks for me as well. But to find an expression of God it's love that makes us appreciative with gratitude that we're not walking this journey alone, that God really does care about what's going on in our lives. God, I don't think God cares that if I, well, I was going to say which color of blue shirt I wore, but you know I'm going to wear Carolina blue, go my team last night. Um, and you're thinking, why are you saying all that? I'm saying all that to say this, is that no matter who we are, or what our choices in life are, God is going to find us right there in that moment. And that should not only humble us, but it should also empower us. 
Jeff, turn the mics up that everybody, and then I know we've got some that pick up some. I want you, for our prayer time today, I want you to just say one word or two, shout it out, and shout it out loud, or if you have to say it soft and then loud, of something that you are thankful for. Let that begin our prayer time today. Sound loud. New life. Sunshine. Good health. <laughs> Love. Rain. Trust. <laughs> Carol, can I throw you under the bus on that one? <laughs> Carol's response to someone, somebody said rain. Who said rain? All right. We're not going to judge anybody else. They can be thankful for rain, too. <laughs> I'm sure in California where there's 50-some feet of snow, they're ready for not rain but uh, everything else. And it depends on what's going on in the season of our life sometime as to what we are thankful for. Is that not true? All right. Now I want you to say something about just the moment of where you are. One word that describes where you are in your journey of life. And it could be up or it could be down. One word. Growing. Sometimes it's important for us to be honest and have that balance. Jennifer talked about in our book study how we're talking about emotions that we feel, the, the feel-good things and when we are in church or we're really there on top of things and we're sensing God's presence are those time in the shadows when we may not necessarily feel God's presence, but realizing as we begin to see when we, through those shadows that God is still present there and that balance of being awake and sleep. Some of you work night shifts, and so you know your balances are sometimes reversed from some of the rest of us, but realizing that all of us are at different spaces and places. In our prayers today, may we realize that people all across the world, O oh Lord, are indeed in different spaces and places. We lift up to you all those places where there, are, where there is conflict. Sometimes it's verbally. Sometimes it's physical violence. Sometimes it's war. Sometimes it's involving just trying to cry out for justice, but also the taking of innocent lives. And we hold all of that in our hearts as we lift this up to you today to remember the people of Ukraine, to remember the people of the Middle East, and all of those places that life is right now just very, very hard and almost heart-wrenching. It is heart-wrenching, and it touches us even across the world. We pray for healing. We pray for that healing of body, mind, and soul in a way that we claim that your spirit of love, of radical inclusive love, is going to take the place in the hearts and take hold in the hearts and minds of not only our leaders, but leaders across the world. Give us the voice that we need to continue working toward being and being a voice and the ability to see those right beside of us who may be marginalized or oppressed. We pray for physical healing, too, for those who, whom life has just become challenging in so many ways, maybe unexpected ways. And as we grow older in our lives and in our health, we hold each other as you hold us. We thank you and we praise you for all that you are and all that you make it possible for us to discover at each part of our life. We come, yes, Lord, we come asking for mercy. We come knowing and claiming your mercy and your presence and your promises and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. May we respond now to Kyrie Eleison. Would you respond, Lord, have mercy. Christe Eleison. Christ, have mercy. Kyrie Eleison. Lord, have mercy. And our response. Words of Scripture from Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 27. 
From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you're a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in the Creator's glory with God's angels and then reward each person according to what they have done. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Hold me. What would you do if you suddenly won the lottery and won a million dollars? Go on vacation, what else? A long vacation. <laughs> what else? What? Pay your debts. Move to the beach. We are at the beach. Or we're a mile and a half from the bay, on the beach. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, pay off the church building. Wow, okay. We probably would have to pay some taxes on that, I'm sure, yeah. Not probably, we would have to, yeah. Well, you know, we all think about that, what it would be like to win the lottery, and we could do this or that if we just had this, but the truth of the matter is God is still calling us to be a generous, compassionate people, whether we have a million dollars or a dollar. My grandfather used to say, we always think that somebody who has a dollar more than us is rich. A lot of truth to that, isn't there? And as we go about our daily lives, I think we forget how privileged we are. We forget how blessed we are. And yes, there will be times that any of us may go through struggles financially and you know, as we think about food insecurity in our communities and things of that nature. But we are, for whatever reason, and maybe we don't understand it, maybe we don't have to, but we have been, I believe, called to this place at this time in our journeys in our life together. And I want you to look around to your neighbor sitting beside of you. And don't say, get behind me, Satan, that was in the scripture. We'll come back to that one later. But say... 
Thank you for being here. Thank you for being who you are. And thank you for paying my tithe today. No, I didn't say that. I say all that to say this, that whether it's a million dollars or a dollar, it was that poor widow woman in the temple that Jesus called attention to. And so look to your neighbor and say, thank you for how you give yourself. And as a reminder that as we give ourselves in different ways, that God blesses that offering in a way that will make, we hope, a difference in Christ's name and in our spirit. And we are going to receive the offering. And I'm not going to say money doesn't count, but it is the intent of our heart. It's the presence of our wholeness together that makes a difference. And God is always somehow providing, as God has throughout all of humanity, the necessary things that we need. Maybe even, and my grandmother used to say when I, I'd get ready to go to town, I'd say, Granny, what, you need, need something in town? She'd say, did you say need or want? And sometimes I think we get confused between our needs and our wants. May God continue to provide our needs. And as we claim God's promises, I think we're going to be surprised at what God... And it's not just about getting back from God. It's so God gives us so we can continue giving and making a difference in someone else's life as so many has in ours. Can I hear an amen to that? That's Sermon 3.2 for today. Gracious and merciful God, thank you as we receive our offering today. Continue to guide us. Continue to put your fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives in ways that just impassion us with compassion, in ways that we want to make a difference, and open our eyes that we can see where those needs are and reach out in ways that are not judgmental and not intimidating, but truly walk the journey with others who are discovering that you love them as much as you love any of us. And may we continue to just be a light in this community in a way that just shares with others the love that and the peace and the joy that you want so much for ourselves and all who call, are called by your name. It's in Jesus' holy and precious name that we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I invite you to give today as God's Spirit leads you to give. You can go online, newlifemcc.net, and give on our giving page. Put something in the offering plate. We don't pass them, as you know, but you can get up at any time and put something there or drop something in the mail. But thank you for who you are and the way you continue to give of yourselves. Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Yaman Adonai, age to age or still the same, by the power of the name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kamkan Adonai, we will praise you and lift you high. El Shaddai Through your love and through the land You saved the son of Abraham Through the power of your hand Turn sin to dry land To the outcast on her knee You were the God who really sees your might you set your children free El Shaddai El Shaddai El Yanana Adonai Age to age you're still the same by the power of the name El Shaddai El Shaddai El Kamkana Adonai, we will praise you and lift you high, El Shaddai. Through the year, you made it clear, the time of Christ was near. Through the people couldn't see what Messiah to be. Though your work contained a plan, they just could not understand your most high.
last work was done in the frailty of your son. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kanan Adonai, age to age you're still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kamkan Adonai, I will praise you until I die, El Shaddai. Would you rise as you're able for the doxology? Most gracious God, we do indeed give you thanks for this beautiful day. Please, God, allow us to use these gifts to give you glory in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As the choir comes down, let me just say this has certainly been a week of not throwbacks, but takebacks. And taking me back to different places. Sarah, as you sang that song, I was transported back. I think it was Amy Grant that may have sung that. Uh, is that right, James? I think. You know, now we have a drag queen whose name is Flamey Grant. Um, and um, actually does gospel music, too, and some contemporary music. So, yeah. I think most of you are aware that last Sunday afternoon um, I left and drove halfway back to uh, Marion from, to see my folks. My mom was in the hospital, uh, and she's home now, but uh, still not doing well. So please continue to remember both my mom and my dad uh, in prayers, and we'll just continue this journey of being there uh, together. And thank you for your concern about my mom and dad and, and, and also for me. Um, then coming back on Wednesday, uh, we had a really good discussion. It was nice. I drove back all the way. I realized that as I'm getting older, that trip you know, is seven and a half hours. is not as short as what it used to be. But I think I was on adrenaline. We had good discussion Wednesday night and then wrapped around. And thank you for those of you who were able to be here. I understand some of you couldn't because it was middle of the afternoon for the installation service for our Council of Elders. Uh, you may be interesting to know that now that I have that title of re supposed to be Reverend Elder, Betty has renamed that title as Reverend Older. <laughs> so there, if you're going to use that title, you have to be younger than me, Betty, though, on that one. So uh, and there will be a sermon coming up that talks about the difference between being an elder and being elderly. Uh, so we'll, we'll deal with that. Yesterday, um, and Friday, I was just sort of wiped out. You ever get to that point? You're just going on adrenaline, and then you're just wiped out. And, uh, but then yesterday, I went to First Presbyterian Church here in Norfolk, first time I had been to uh, in that, their campus and facility uh, for the funeral and celebration of life for Caroline Jones, who's the daughter of Rick Jones and Nelwyn uh, Beeman. Nelwyn is, for those of you who remember, was our music director uh, before, let's see, before Scott, before Brenna, before John, Nelwyn was here. Uh, Nelwyn grew up uh, in Virginia, but then went to Mars Hill College um, and became a Baptist, uh, I guess, while she was there, but then became a pre an Episcopalian, declares she had a Pentecostal st spent, a stint. And uh, then when she came to us, and I've told her through the years, I've never seen the Pentecostal Nelwyn. Uh, she's now the music director at Ghent United Methodist Church. Uh, but uh, Caroline, uh, Nellan and Rick's daughter, uh, was her body, as you remember, was um, washed up in Ocean View and passed uh, a month or so ago. So a very tragic thing. Uh, Nellan and Rick uh, are raising uh, Jimon, uh, their 12-year-old grandson. And so a, a family of love but is hit by a lot of tragedy and sadness in this moment. 
And so it was good to be there with them. Uh, Rick will be coming at some point over the next month or so to share. He came in and talked with me uh, after Carolyn passed, Caroline passed, and shared some things that he had written in terms of his own emotions. And there, I say all that to say this, because what he shared with me, you all, we all, are a part of his story. And you remember when Nellen first came, uh, Rick came with her into rehearsal, and he said, well, I might go, because they've been members at the Ascension Episcopal Church, where Nellen was the office administrator. And he said, I might come one Sunday a month. He came to rehearsal with her and came to church. He said, well, maybe two Sundays a month. And then it was three. And then Rick has just been part of us as much or more than Nellen along the way. And so it's, that does me good to know that when folks are here, even if they're not able to be here, they're in the community, they're still connected with us. And you hear me say this a lot, whether it's for one Sunday, for a number of Sundays, a month of Sundays, or years, or a lifetime, I believe God has rhyme and reason to calling us to this space and place. And so please know that wherever you are in your journey, even if it's somewhere else, this can always still be home. And so we'll look forward to having uh, Rick with us. Now, I say all that about Nelwyn, that she had a Pentecostal stint, to say that right after I left seminary, two years into a three-year program because I said I was sick of the fundamentalism in the Baptist church, I was really running from being gay, that I went to First Presbyterian not here but in Raleigh. And I learned some things. And going back into that space again, you know, and I don't know as much about the church here, but the one in Raleigh was much more formal than anything I, as a low church Baptist guy, you know, going into, you know, we jokingly call our Presbyterian brothers and sisters and however they self-identify as God's frozen chosen. And uh, the pastor at the time in Raleigh was Scottish and had a very thick Scottish brogue. And he knew I had come from the Baptist seminary. And he said to me, Mark, the only difference between a Baptist and a Presbyterian is a Presbyterian is a Baptist with a drinking problem. <laughs> and I said back to him and his brogue, I said, no, Dr. Edwards, a Baptist is a Presbyterian who hides his drinking problem. So, yeah. While I was there yesterday, um, this lady uh, came up to me and I had a clergy collar on and she said, I've never seen so many clergy collars in all my life. And I said, well, and I pointed to Nell and I said, she has so many different connections in all the different churches. And I shared with her about my experience in Raleigh. And one of the things, and in the program yesterday, they did not only the Lord's Prayer, uh, and it was interesting because in the Lord's Prayer in different tra denominational traditions, you got to figure out if you're a debtor church or a, trans or a transgressor or a trans trespass kind of church. I even couldn't remember which one we were doing. I had to go back and look at the recording to see what, because we do it by road every Sunday. We sing it. But if you've ever been to a new church, and I could tell in that moment when we said the Lord's Prayer that we were from all different backgrounds because there was a hesitant pause for just a split second as people wanted to make sure they didn't say dead or if it was trespass. Now, my take on the Apostles' Creed, which the Presbyterian, Bernie, you went to Princeton, which is the hall, no, you did not the seminary. Okay, it's different. All right, I said that last week. I stand corrected twice. Third time is the charm. So the Presbyterians do that, and I was so proud of myself when I was at First Presbyterian Raleigh because I, this low church Baptist boy had memorized the Apostles' Creed. I went home to see my friends, and friends from high school, their dad was the pastor at First Presbyterian back home in Marion, and I thought, I'm going to go be Presbyterian today. I don't have to be Baptist anymore. And I went in, and they did the Apostles' Creed, and nobody told me that there were two different versions of the Apostles' Creed. And in that God's frozen chosen church, I don't know if I brought it out here with me or not, but there's one line in there that says he descended into hell. Some folks say it and some don't. Well, the church in Raleigh said it. The church yesterday said it. The church back home didn't. But I can tell you, this mountain boy who was so proud of memorizing the Apostles' Creed, right in that moment when there was that pregnant pause, shouts out, and he descended into hell. And everybody turned and looked at me. <laughs> well, rest assured, we're not going to talk about hell today. But I do want to talk about some things that are maybe hellish, maybe even hard topics. Things maybe that we don't always want to hear in this passage of Scripture that we read today from Matthew's Gospel is set in the context, and we've talked about this over the last few weeks, of Peter's own spiritual journey as he responded to Jesus' call to follow him 
and how Peter evolved, and it was an up and down kind of evolving for Peter. Sometimes he got it, and sometimes he didn't get it. And sometimes Jesus even said to him, as we heard today, what? Get behind me, Satan. Now, that's pretty, pretty harsh, especially in the context that right before that, Jesus was talking to the disciples and to Peter about who do people say that I am and who do you say that I am? And what did Peter say? Remember, we alluded to this last week. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Christ also, little c, meaning Messiah, meaning anointed one. And so Jesus responds in that moment to Peter's answer was, wow, you know, God has revealed, this has been revealed to you really by the Spirit is I think what Jesus was saying. And on this what? On this rock, play on the words of Peter, I will do what? Build my church. So you go from, wow, being elevated to whatever title that Peter had to being told, get behind me, Satan. Talk about the good side and the bad side, trying to figure out who was on what side. And so it seems to me, and the reason that Jesus said that, get behind me, Satan, because immediately after all this this conversation seems to have happened. Jesus began to shift the topics and the tone of the conversation from the highs and the good things and the miracles and the healings and all of that to talking about what was about to happen. And Peter didn't want to hear it. Now, we might blame Peter for that, but can you really blame Peter at all? Because if he was truly seeing him as the Messiah, the anointed one, there was nothing in his background and upbringing that was going to say that the Messiah was going to fail, that the Messiah was going to be suffering and crucified and die and all of that. And so he was reacting, and sometimes maybe we do the same thing, and maybe we don't want to face those hard topics of what happens when life becomes challenging as we go through different seasons of life when something happens unexpectedly, or maybe it's been something that's been there all along that we've never been able to be honest with about ourselves and how we deal with depression or addiction or all of these things that are hard topics, things we don't want to hear. But in this moment, and Peter pulls Jesus aside. I don't think he necessarily did it in front of the other folks. He pulls Jesus aside, and the really rough word is he rebuked him. He basically, you know really told him, this is not going to happen. We're not going to let this happen. It can't be. Peter was in denial. They weren't in Egypt on the Nile, but he was in denial at that point of what could happen. Sometimes maybe we get to that point in our own lives that we just can't process it all. Maybe we just can't hold it all. And the emotions, both of the day and in the shadows of the night or whatever, we can't hold it, and it's difficult for us. Jesus is being very direct with Peter and then goes on to say something else and says, pick up what? Your cross and follow me. Now, we hear cross and we put it in the context of the day that Jesus was crucified. We put it in the context of the resurrection and what we've come to see the cross. But Jesus is talking to this before on the other side of all of this. What could Jesus have really meant when he said, pick up your cross? Now, most of the time, how do we hear that interpreted most of the time? To pick up our cross means to what? Suffer. suffer. What else? Acknowledgement of not only suffering, but that we are carrying burdens along the way. And, oh, my goodness, what's the old saying from that movie, Sorted Lives? If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. And the guy's sitting at the bar and he's doing complaining about this. And they said, come down off the cross. We need the wood. <laughs> you know, sometimes we put our own selves on the cross, forgetting what's already been done for us. And, you know, if we think about what Jesus literally says here is take up your cross. Don't get stuck on it. Don't stay there on it. And do what? Follow me. Go to work. Pick up your yoke. Remember, Jesus does say that at another point. Let me carry. Come to me. Take my yoke upon you. But we refuse to do that. And in that passage, Ron, that it says also about that, learn from me. 
As I think about that song, it says, return to you. And it says, teach me to learn and as to think about, are we willing not just to take up our cross, but are we willing to learn from Jesus? Because one version of the passage in Luke's gospel says, you know, if you lose your life, you will do what? You will save it. Matthew's version, though, says something else. You see what Matthew's, what does Matthew say today? Find it. What does it mean to, what's the difference between saving our life and finding our life? I think I've told you many times about our neighbor back home on Wednesday evening at prayer meetings who would, during testimony time, would be angry at you, not speak to you for two weeks if you beat him up. He wanted to be the first person up to give praise to Jesus. And he'd say, I just want to thank the Lord for saving me however many years ago it was. And he'd sit back down. And I wanted to say, what's God done since then? Finding our life, I think, is different from being saved in our life. Finding our life may require us to begin living our lives. And are we so stuck on the cross that we keep Jesus stuck on the cross to realize that the power of the resurrected Christ in our lives is dynamic and real and now? Or are we keeping it so compartmentalized that is that being, do we hear echoing Perhaps the Christ saying to us, do I dare say it? i got to back up because if he said to me, get behind me, what? Yeah. We can allow ourselves to keep Christ so stuck and ourselves so stuck that we refuse to begin to live in ways that may not only surprise us, but empower us to truly discover some things about God and ourselves and our neighbors that maybe we never imagined. Look around this room. Who do you see? God's children. Loving arms. Loving arms. The song we sang, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord so that we can truly see each other. But sometimes it's difficult for us to see each other because of the mask that we're wearing, so many masks, we can't see through all those. Have you ever put on a mask and then maybe another mask and you realize you can't see, and especially if you wear glasses, or if your glasses are like mine, they get so smudged and dirty that I can't hear anybody. <laughs> and sometimes we don't want anybody to see us. Can you imagine what Peter must have been feeling in that moment when Jesus said that to him? But then we see Peter bounce back and we'll see this coming over and over and over and over again. And we see that God doesn't give up on Peter. And I want you to say this with me. God doesn't give up on me. God doesn't give up on me. And I'm not going to give up on God. Do we believe that? Do we believe that about ourselves? I may be as old as, I was going to say Tony, but Tony's not here to say. I may have the title of Reverend Older. I may not be able to do what I did when I was Alan's age. Or, you know what? It doesn't matter how old I am. In this moment, in that moment. And, you know, Caroline Lewis, and I quote her a lot. She's a Lutheran theologian. She said, maybe the cross in this moment isn't about the burdens we care as much as it is about the choices we make. And I'm not talking about a choice to be in preference of who we are. That's not a preference, is it? It's who we are. But what about the choices we make to live into who God's calling us? Maybe that's what, if we look at the cross that way, is not a burden, but is something we carry with us in that moment of choice to be able to truly free ourselves because isn't that what the power of the resurrection does? Is it frees us to truly be who God has created us to be. You know, was it some of you are old enough to remember that radio commentator, what was his name, Paul Harvey? And when he would say, the rest of the story. If you're not old enough, go Google it. I don't even know if it's on the Internet. It's so old. But many of us grew up hearing that. The rest of the story was written in that moment of resurrection, and as you and I continue to live it today. 
And I'm almost sounding like this is going to be an Easter sermon, but it's not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. We're still discovering. And I think we'll see the hope that comes from what Peter does and says with the women. Absolutely don't forget who was the first at the tomb, last at the cross and first at the tomb. It was the women that were there. So I want us this week, if you will, to think about as we think about this call and request of Jesus to pick up our cross is that we're not putting ourselves on the cross, but we're allowing ourselves to be free to make the choices that God's Holy Spirit in our lives each moment puts before us to make. To one, see ourselves as a child of God. Not be ashamed of who we are or how we're created and not have that We can choose to forgive. We can choose not to be resentful. We can choose to not hold on to some things that we hold on to. Now, if we're all honest, how many of us are holding on to something right now that we need to let go of? You know, I could sing that song from Frozen. (laughs) Let it go, let it go, let it go. I know, right? You don't want to sing, right? Stick with my day job. Yeah, I know. I got that. But you know what? We can't sometimes let it go by ourselves. But it is with the power of God's Holy Spirit that you and I can make that choice to let it go. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right indeed, O Lord, to give you thanks and praise. And so we lift our voices with all the saints and angels and proclaim your glory in unending praise as we praise together, saying... Gracious and merciful God, creator of us all, savior of us all, a Holy Spirit that sustains each of us, even in those moments when we have doubts, even in those moments when we're unsure, even in those moments that we feel like we have failed you and ourselves and others, that you still hold us. Hold us as we hold each other in this moment as your Holy Spirit is poured out upon this table, the gifts on this table, the gifts we hold in our hands, and wherever and whomever folks are later in the day or later in the week that are connected to this moment of worship. We come to this table of grace, this table of community and thanksgiving, and we come humbly as your spirit is guiding us, touching us, empowering us in this moment. We thank you, we praise you for all that you are and all that you make it possible for us to discover as your children as well. And all God's children said... Jesus took the bread from the Passover table and blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body. Literally translated, I love that translation. It is my body, what? Open to you. An image of a God that is so radically inclusive in love that God is not going to leave you out. Would you say it with me? I'm not left out. I'm not left out. Oh boy, when that happens and we know that there's a seat at the table, we're going to rush in and go be first in line to eat, aren't we? Jesus is saying, come on down. You don't have to wait in line. In the same way, he took the cup and poured the cup and blessed it. I like to put it this way. It's mercy, it's grace, it's compassion, it's forgiveness, all wrapped up into one. And all we have to do is to realize that it's already ours. All we have to do is accept it. And I do add this caveat that once in a while, we're asked to give that love and forgiveness and acceptance and inclusion, not just once in a while, but maybe lots of times in our life, to somebody else. Because that's what it means to be a child of God with all of our siblings, no matter who they are, no matter how they self-identify, maybe not even their faith tradition, that we can be accepting and inclusive and reach out and share because so many have done that for us. Now that you've already said I'm not left out, now say it really is for me. Really is for me. You got to say that really part in there. Sometimes we need to have convincing of that. Sometimes we even have to be convincing that it's not only for us, but it's for 
Oh my, could it be for that person too? Let's leave that judgment at the door because that is not mine nor yours to make. There is one thing I cannot do as a clergy, as a pastor, even as a Reverend Older Betty. I cannot keep someone from this table of grace, this table of thanksgiving, this table of thanksgiving and community. That's something that is welcome and open to every single person, no matter without judgment, no matter where you are in your faith journey, whether you're a member of this church or of any other. So now I want you to say just for you, it is for me. It is for me. And with just as much gusto, look to one or two or three other people and say, it is for you too. It is for you. I saw some finger pointing going on there, so we'll deal with that one later. <laughs> now I want you to go all generic on it. I know you want to. What is it you're going to say? All y'all and mama and them and all that. You know, that may be one of the most wonderful things we hear when we get to heaven is to realize, wow, wow, I didn't think I'd make it, but I did. And then wow again, I didn't think you'd make it either, but we did. Yeah, can I hear amen to that? Yeah. God's all-inclusive, radically inclusive love. Today we proclaim the great miracle and mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ shall come again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, no matter how you self-identify, indeed, God's love is for you. If you didn't receive one of the individual communion packets when you came in, if you raise your hand, Jennifer will bring you one. If you're at home today, go get a cookie, a cracker, a cup of juice, a cup of wine. It doesn't matter what because God's Spirit connects us all in this moment. So the choir comes back in just a moment. We will share together as the body of Christ in this community. that we share together as the body of Christ. The cup of grace and mercy and salvation may we share together. I invite you to rise as you're able and as you feel comfortable to share together in the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our closing song today.
given day, we may find ourselves like Peter, being asked to make a decision, who do we believe that Jesus is? And we may even feel like we disagree with what Jesus is telling us in our, about our lives, and we may even hear Jesus say, wait a minute, let me put you, I'm not going to say straight, <laughs> but let me help you see the light of who we all are in that particular moment. No matter who you are, how you self-identify, leave this place today knowing you are a beloved child of God and that nothing can change that. And even when we ask those hard questions, things that we don't want maybe to hear the answers to, that God is as much, maybe even more so there in those moments in the shadows of the night as much as in the daytime. God bless you, my friends, and thank you for being here. Can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody do me like the Lord? Can nobody do me like Jesus? 